Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number. 127 day day 3127 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition third edition day 127 we are in the process of solving data analysis exercises and today we'll do problem number five problem number five that you will find on page number 320 turn to page number 320 and read the problem to yourself this is what it says it says that the weights of 800 insects were recorded so some scientist was studying certain insect and he or she uh, put these insects on the scale and they measure the weights of 800 such insects. The measurements were, are shown in the box plot that we're going to plot in a second. The fact that they are measured in milligram, uh, it, 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 does, it does warm the cockles of our heart that the weights were measured in milligram and not, uh, and not in ounces or something else. But it really doesn't do anything. Do you understand? We really don't care what the units of measurement is. Let's take a look at the box plot. Let's, let's, let's take a look at the box plot so that we can answer these questions. This is what we have to find. We have to figure out what the range, what the range is of these 800 observations based, based on the box plot that we're about to put. Box plot is also called box and whisker plot sometimes. We have to find out the range, the demarcation for the first quartile, second quartile, third quartile the interquartile range and finally the median. Let's see what we can do. I could have plotted this thing ahead of time but I did not do it on purpose because as we do it, as we get the information, we'll, we'll make a note of this thing. Let's, let's, let's start from up here so that we have more room. Why, why, why be stingy? So the scale goes all the way, the scale goes all the way from 100, from 100 to 150. In other words, we're going to divide this thing into five equal parts. We'll do the best we can. Just be reasonable. One, two, three, four, and five. I, I, I know it's, it doesn't look very nice. This one is longer. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, and five. That's a little bit better. There we go. So if we divide them into five and goes from 100 to 150, these are 110. 120, 130, 140. As I said before, I could have very easily have done ahead of time. I did not do it ahead of time on purpose. Yes. So that's our scale. That's the scale we're going to use. And this is what we are given. So if this is 100, this is 110. The midway point here is 105. And that's where the story begins. This, this is where the story begins at 105. At 105 is where the story begins. And the story ends if you look at very closely, you have to have the book in front of you so that you can follow me. If you look at very closely, it ends at about... Oh, in the book it's 131. Am I looking at the right... Oh, sorry. It ends, the story ends at 146. Ends at 146. This is 140. This is 145. 146 is somewhere here, it ends somewhere here. That's where it ends. The story begins here, it ends here. What does it tell us? It tells us that the lowest measurement that they got, the, the lightest insect that they had, had in this pool of 800 insects, the lightest insect that they found weighed 105 milligram. 105 milligram. The heaviest insect that they found in the pool of this in the pool of these 800 insects weighed 146 milligram. There we go. We have our answer. We have our first uh, answer to our first question. The first question was, what is the range? Well, the range it goes all the way from 146. To, that's the heaviest insect. 105 is the lightest one. Is it 105? Why does it say? Yeah, 105. 
146 minus 106 would have been exactly 40, so it's going to be 41. That's our range. Then they go on to tell us, again I have to keep looking at the book because I'm just reproducing it here. It, it starts, it looks like, at 9. Look at the book yourself, as I keep repeating like a parrot. The story starts at, not 9, rather, at, uh, this is 105, 115. It starts at about, this is 115, it looks like 114 is where it starts. That's the demarcation here. And that's our first quartile. First quartile is 114. There is the answer to our first, next question. First quartile is 114. Now we have to show the third quartile. Third quartile is, looks like is 126. So there's, this is 120, this is 130, this is 125. So it's right here, 126. Let's make a note here, 126. This was, this is 110, 120, 105. This was 104. Or rather, 114. Which is what we have here. The third quartile is 126, right here. And now we look at a box around it. Box around the first quartile and the third quartile. And that box shows, what does this box show in the, in the box plot? The so-called box plot. What does the box plot show? It, the, box plot, the box in the box plot shows the middle, the middle 50% of the observation. The middle 50% of the observation because 25% of the time, 25% of, per of the time, when you weigh the insect, it weighed less than 114 gram. And 25% of the time when you weighed an insect, it weighed more than 126 gram. But 50% of the time, 50% of the time, in other words, since we had 800 insects, 400 insects weighed between 114 gram and 126 gram. Now, within that box, we're going to find one more line, which is a very important line. I'm going to put it in a different color so that you can see it. And that line, if you look at closely, it appears at... It appears at, looks like 119, at 119, or 118, I can't tell. Let me take a look at the book here. Yes, 118. So if this is 120, and this is 120, this is 119, let's call it 118 right here. And this is the point, this is the light I'm talking about. It appears at 118. So what does that line show us? That shows us the second quartile. That shows us the second quartile. Let's make a note of it. Second quartile, second quartile is 118. But the second quartile is the same as the 50th percentile. It is the same as the 50th percentile. Just like the first quartile is the 25th percentile, it shows us 25% of the observations were below it. The third quartile is the 75th percentile, is the 75th percentile, and this marker shows us, this marker shows us that 75% of the time the observation were below this value, and 25% of the time they were above it, even though there's a lot more area here, but there are very few insects who were fat, who were very heavy, very few insects, only 25% of the time the insect that they picked up weighed more than 126 grams. So this is, the, this is our second quartile, which is same as the 50th percentile. And of course, it's the first 50th percentile or second quartile, that is also our median. So there is go, we answer the next question. The question was, what's the median? And finally, finally the last question, what is the interquartile, what is the interquartile range? Interquartile range is where 50% of the aberration lie. It lies, interquartile range is this minus this, third quartile, minus the first quartile. That is the interquartile range simply means what's the range of the middle 50% of the population. We have the regular range which is which is one which is 41 which is the range of all the values that we observe. All the values. The lowest value we observe was 105 milligram. The highest value we observe is 146 gram. 146 milligram. So that's the range. Overall range. Interquartile range tells us What's the range of middle 50% of the population? And the answer is 
the interquartile range is the third quartile is 126, first quartile we found is 114, 126 minus 116 would have been exactly 10, so 126 minus 114 is going to be 12. It's going to be 12. In other words, I'm checking my notes here, make sure I don't make a mistake. Yes. In other words, in other words, what does this 12 tell us? What is the interpretation of this 12? This 12 milligram, listen very carefully. What's the interpretation of this 12 milligram figure that we just found in the quartile range? It tells us that the difference between the high, between the heaviest insect and the lightest insects in the middle 50% of the population was only 12 gram. But the difference between the heaviest insect and the lightest insects among all the insects, all 800 insects, was 41 gram. What else they're looking for? That's about it. That was the end of part A. Let's look at part B. I don't want to erase this thing because we're going to need it. Let's look at part B. Just give me one second. Part B says that the 80th percentile, we are told, let me read it verbatim. If the 80th percentile of the measurement is 130 milligram, how many measurements are there between 126 and 130? But we are told that the 80th percentile is exactly 130 milligram. Let's make a note here. We are told that the 80th percentile is exactly 130 milligram. The question is, how many lie? How many lie? How many lie between? 120 milligram and 130 milligram. How many insects among these 800 insects that we measured the weights, how many of these 800 insects will have the weight of between 120 milligram and 130 milligram? Let's find out, shall we? Given the fact that the 80th percentile is 130 milligram, what else do we know from this figure? Well, we also know the 75th percentile right here. We also know the 75th percentile, the third quarter, right here. That's our third quartile. Yes, that's our third quartile. This is 75th percentile. So we know, okay, watch what happens. We, so we know that 75th percentile is 126. This value is 126. Which is why they are asking us how many lie from between the weight of 126 milligram and 130 milligram. Well, essentially, they're asking us how many insects are there between 80th percentile and 75th percentile. From 75th percentile to 80th percentile, 130, see how many insects lie in this in this gap right here. Between between 126, right here is the 126, and this is 130, right here in this in this area. How many insects are going to weigh between 126 milligram and 130 milligram? The answer is 5% of them because this is the 80th percentile, or rather this is the 75th percentile, or this was the 75th percentile, because I wrote down is equal to, it goes all the way there. So instead of, instead of Q3, let's put down 50th, 75th percentile. This is the 75th percentile, and this is the 80th percentile. So this, this range is what we're looking for, and during that range would be the 5th percentile. So this represents five percentile. That's what it is. Essentially they're looking for what is five percent of 800 is all they're looking for. That's all it is. Much much ado about nothing at all. Ten percent of 800 would have been 80. Ten percent, ten percent of 800 we know is equal to 80. Therefore five percent is going to be 40. And that's what it is. 40 insects out of these 800 insects that we have, that we observe, only 40 of them are going to weigh between 126 milligram and 130 milligram. And I think that was the end of that one. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Let me give you the game plan. Okay, since we have, since we are on problem number five, let me tell you what's going on here. I'm going to make a note of it on the top here somewhere. So let's erase all of this thing. We don't need any of this now. Okay, what? so here's what's going on. This was problem number five. This was not problem number five. Problem number six through 
problem number six through ten. Problem number six through ten dealt with permutation and combinations. Dealt with permutation and combination. And we already did those questions, even though today is day number 127, those questions were already done from day 116 through 120, which is 3120, do you understand? This is 3116. So those five problems are already done. And then, starting from problem number 11 through 15, problem number 11 through 15, Let's put them here. Problem number 11 through 15, they deal with probability. And those were done on day number 3000. And, and 1 to 3115. Even though there are five problems, but we did many more extra problems there, and we spent, we had 15 videos on that topic. In other words, in other words, 11 through, 11 through 15 are already done, 6 through 10 are already done, we are at problem number 5, problem number 5 we just finished, 6 through 10 are already done, 11 through 15 are already done. Only thing that is left at this point are three problems. Only three problems are number 16, 17, and 18. Those are the only three problems that are left in the book. And then we'll be finished with the entire GRE book that you have in front of you. We have done every single problem in this book dealing with math. Only three more to go, which we're going to cover on day number 128, 129, and 130. The story is going to finish on day 130. And then after that, after that, after we have finished the three problems in the next three videos, after that, if I feel like it, I might do the problems in the two exams that are given in the book, or I might not. But in, in three days' time, the story is going to finish as far as the actual problems are concerned in the book. By in three days' time, we will have done every single math problem that you see in this official guide. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Where, where we'll meet, and we'll do problem number 16. Bye now.